Hello everyone. So in today's class, we'll start with the units called kinematics and specifically we'll talk about motion in one dimension. Let's get started. Okay. So if I talk about kinematics, kinematics is that branch of physics that deals with the study of motion, like, you know, and also specifically the hows related to motion. For example, how is a body moving, right? So how is it moving in east direction, west direction, or whatever direction? With what speed is it moving? How much time was taken during the motion? So on and so forth. So in kinematics, we talk about like the hows of motion. How is motion occurring in a body? Okay. Now, some general terms that you should be aware of while, uh, like, you know, while studying about um, kinematics is firstly, position. Position of a point is its coordinate with respect to the reference point. For example, if I talk about this, uh, this Cartesian plane, right, and we, our point of interest is right over here, right, this is like, say, our point of interest, right. So, the position of this point of interest will be its coordinates, which is at this point x comma y from the point of reference, which is in this case origin, right? So from if we measure uh, the coordinates of this point A uh, from the origin, it's going to be x uh, in the x direction and y in the y axis, right? So the position of this point of interest is going to be x comma y, right? Like that uh, for any point that we're talking about, the position of its coordinates is going to be its position. The position of a point is its coordinates with respect to the reference point. Sorry. Now, frame of reference. What is a frame of reference? Frame of reference to which an observer observes a position of a motion of an ob any object. For example, if I observe this car from this position, I will say that this car is moving, right? But if I observe this car, uh, from by sitting on top of it, I would say that the car is not moving, the car is at rest, right? So basically, when I'm observing it from here, the position of my observance is called the frame of reference. I hope that is clear. Now, condition of rest and motion. Before I explain to you what is rest and what is motion, one thing that you should always have in your mind is that the concept of rest and motion are relative concepts, okay? One there is nothing in this world that is at absolute rest or at absolute motion. Now, why am I saying this? Let's, let's look at it with the help of an example. So, but before that, let us know what exactly is the condition of rest and what exactly is the condition of motion, right? A body is said to be at rest if its coordinate does not change with respect to the frame of reference with passing time. Okay, let me add that. With passing time so a body is said to be at rest when its coordinate do not change with respect to the frame of reference with passing time so the coordinate of a body remains constant even when the time is passing then the body is said to be at rest right while a body is said to be at motion if its coordinate is changing with respect to the frame of reference with passing times so as the time passes, the coordinates of the body also changes, right? So when that happens, the body is said to be in motion. Now let us take a look at an example, right? This example that we had. Now let us consider this guy over here. So this guy is at like, you know, this guy is not moving in like right now. If I look at, the, if I am also standing here, then this guy is not moving according to me, right? Now. This guy saw that uh, there's a uh, car. I know this doesn't look like car, but let us assume we are, I'm not really that artistic. Uh, so this car over here is moving in this direction at 10 meter per second, right? And inside of this car, there's this another guy sitting over here, right? So according to this yellow guy, the car is moving, right? The car is in motion, right? And it is moving at 10 meter per second. While for this guy uh, also, this tree right over here, this is at rest. This guy be like, the tree is at its place, right? The tree is not moving at all. Now, so according to this yellow guy, this car is at motion while this tree is at rest. Now, let us change the point of view, okay? Let us change the point of view from this yellow colored guy to this red colored guy, right? Now, if we talk about this red colored guy, what do you think this red color guy would observe? This red color guy, since he is 
he himself is like you know sitting on the top of the moving car he would be he would see this yellow colored guy moving in this direction at 10 meter per second right and he would also see this tree moving backwards at again 10 meter per second so this is what i'm saying when i check the tree from the yellow colors guy point of view the tree was at rest but when i changed my point of view when i changed my reference point the tree shifted from the state of rest to the state of motion hence the state of rest and state of motion are relative quantities and they depend and they can change if we change the frame of reference i hope this is very very clear to everyone now let us move on to the next point which is distance and displacement distance is the actual path covered in a time interval by a body it is a scalar quantity scalar quantity meaning it only has magnitude it does not has any direction for a moving object distance always increases okay well if i talk about displacement the shortest distance between initial and final position of the body is called displacement right and it is a vector quantity now what is a vector quantity any qu a physical quantity that has both magnitude as well as direction right now for a moving object displacement can either increase it can decrease or it could remain same now let me, let us take an example right just give me a second yeah so let us take this example right over here so let's say this is you and you want to go to an italian med school right that's why we are here so one way for you is to like you know take um, a long path uh, or you could take this path you could take this path you could take this path right your final initial position and your final position remains the same but you can literally take any path right all of these paths can be considered at different distances that you might cover while going to the med school while this path this is also a type of distance you travel from your initial position to your final position which is of med school but this is happening in a straight line this is literally the shortest distance between your initial position and your final position and the shortest distance is always in a straight line and that shortest distance to uh, travel from the initial position to the final position is called uh, displacement okay now moving on distance is always greater than or equals to the magnitude of displacement this could also be written as distance since distance is a scalar quantity it will only have magnitude right distance is always greater than or equals to the magnitude of displacement when i put these two block symbol that they are basically mathematical tools which are called mod and they simply means that th that removes the sign positive or negative sign right that that means that it it is strictly displaying the magnitude okay so distance will always be either greater than or equal to the magnitude of displacement okay now so that was next point will be now let us do some analysis distance between a given set of initial and final point can be infinite but the displacement between them is always unique as i explained in this example from your initial position to your final position of med school you could literally take like thousands and millions of paths right so all of those paths would be the distance covered by an object if they took that particular path right but the displacement will always be fixed because displacement is literally the shortest dis uh, distance right so like there could only be one path that is like the the shortest right so for any for any two points the distance could be like there could be infinite ways of measuring the distance depending on what path was taken by the object but the displacement will always be fixed and unique i hope this is very very clear to everyone now moving ahead okay distance can be measured along a curved path or a non straight path but displacement is always measured in a straight line again i told you already that the shortest path is always measured along a straight line hence displacement will always be straight while distance could be like any path straight curved circular whatever okay distance covered by a moving object cannot be decreased with time but displacement can right so for example let me give you an example right let's say that we are talking 
let's talk about the example here so let's say that you know i'm here and i started traveling okay and i traveled from here to and i traveled till here and then i came back and i traveled till here right so this is my final position final position right this now the distance if this is s or this is 2s and this is s so for me the distance is going to be what distance is going to be 2s plus s right which is 3s it is the total path covered while displacement displacement in this case is going to be since this whole thing is 2s and this thing is s so displacement will be initial shortest distance between initial and final position 2s minus of s which will be equals to s right so i hope this is clear let me erase this real quick so that is why they are saying that distance could increase uh, distance could uh, like never decrease displacement can okay now the formula for distance is um distance is speed multiplied by time right so from this equation itself we can get speed is distance upon time while the formula for displacement is basically velocity multiplied by time and from this equation itself we can derive velocity is displacement upon time i hope this is very clear i'll see you in the next part